Hey guys, Ralph here, True Power Trumpet Fitness, and welcome to Friday here in Connecticut. Uh, another overcast rainy day, and it's supposed to be overcast and rainy right on through uh, Tuesday, uh, which sort of uh, puts a damper on my cycling situation, but other than that, life's good. Anyway, uh, this will be the last one for the weekend. I will see you on Monday, and uh, we had lots, a lot of questions about the uh, French horn mouthpiece, okay? So I'll do my best to answer those questions now, and uh, we'll get back to trumpet on Monday. All right, let's do it. That is the Tchaikovsky Fifth horn solo, Tchaikovsky Fifth Symphony, on the trumpet with the horn mouthpiece. And you see how easy it is to jump back and forth. Um, I put some tape on the shank so it wouldn't push in. And get sucked in and um, use no pressure at all. But then it'll thunk, okay? But um, yeah. Now I haven't, that's not playing a note today. Okay, still scraping the crap off. That's not playing a note today. No warm up whatsoever. A foreign mouthpiece. Now, um, what I did yesterday was I went back to the trumpet after playing. The video and whatnot. I'm playing a few minutes on on the uh, French horn, and there was a, there there was a difference in feel when I went back to the one one SP. There's no question. Uh, I didn't notice any noticeable question in performance. There probably would have been, you know, if I had to do something uh, substantial, because um, feel is the whole thing. And if I wasn't feeling it completely right, now. If I was using the French horn before something substantial, I would have warmed up before and it would have been no problem. Okay. Now, with that said, first thing in the morning, no warm up, right to the concerto in the key transposed up on the mouthpiece. Uh, now, as I said, I had only played the French horn literally five minutes before I did the video. Okay, and as I told you, I had no desire whatsoever <clears throat> to play the French horn another five minutes. <laughs> I just, I just didn't really want to do it. I had, uh, it was interesting. I um, rented the French horn for a week, and a friend of mine that I did a lot of work with when I was teaching full time, did you know, threw a lot, a lot of business his way, gave it to him for twenty five bucks for a week. Okay, and I was tempted. Since the Tchaikovsky was such a clam bake yesterday, that um, to take it for a weekend and practice all weekend and come back on Monday and play it perfectly, and for what? <laughs> for what, right? So I didn't do it. So I, I sent it back. And it's funny because I rented it for a week and I brought it back and it was barely three hours since I got it. And they take one look and what happened? Is something wrong? I'll get you another one. No, no, no. I'm just done. I. I'm a trumpet nut. I have no desire whatsoever to play French horn. So anyway, that's that. So here's the deal. Take a look at that rim. Okay, now there is the crux of the matter here. 
you've got a rim that is much more cushioned than a conventional French horn rim. The French horn rim would technically be about half the size of that. And if you've ever used one, it does cut into the, the, the lip pretty easily. Okay, so this, this, this is getting, see, there's nothing there. Little red mark, nothing there. Okay, now if you compare it to the 1SB, you'll see, I don't know if you can see, the diameter of the rim is the same thing. The diameter of the rim is the same thing. That's a uh, Charlie Shaver slash Horse Fisher rim. Okay, and obviously this doesn't have quite the cushion of the 1SB, but save for marking up. Okay, now that's a smaller diameter than a lot of the guys play. Now there, does that help with the cup? The cup is a modified flugelhorn cup that Jerry uses for his flugelhorns 1SS flugelhorn mouthpiece. Okay which the flugelhorn guys love, love. It gives them, you know, G's above high C. That's unusual for flugelhorn that you would even want it. And a little more center of tone as opposed to, which helps with the intonation and everything. The flugelhorn guys absolutely love it. So if you have a flugelhorn guys, I suggest you put one of the, the flugelhorn mouthpieces in your, uh, in your case. Um, now as you see, so that's a Charlie Shaver's rim, okay, with a, Larger Charlie Shaver's diameter with a little more cushioned rim from the conventional French horn, a flugelhorn cup, and I'm not sure if that makes any difference at all, but a 17 hole. The other way around. This is all 17 hole. There you go. Now, 17 hole is a little on the small size, not dr dramatically so. Some of the soprano horn guys are up 18, 19. Okay, so that's a little on the small side. That, that's, you know, if everybody else is playing a 1C, that the hole would be about a 10.5C. It's a little on the small side, but it's not, it's not out of the ballpark. Now, the, the fourth horn player in the symphony is playing a 10 hole or less. All right? And... Uh, so it's not out of the ballpark, but it is on the small side. But <clears throat> once again, if you go back and listen to the vid yesterday and get by the clams, I, I, guys, there, there's no, <laughs> I realized there was clams. If you could get by the clams, especially in the low scales I was playing, the tone is big as a house. I, I mean, there, there's nothing that, that you're gonna miss as far as tone, power, range, and endurance. It's as big as a house. And, and again, I played it five minutes. Now, the double C on the French horn mouthpiece is actually, now it's trumpet, uh, trumpet, trumpet, F, horn and F, so wait a minute, the transposition. So is that gonna be an F or a G above double C? Getting old. Is that the, I think that's an F above double C. Or B flat trumpet. Okay. Now a lot of my my uh, viewers goad me good naturedly, very nice, good naturedly goad me into playing above high C, double C, and I I did it a couple times, and I just really don't want to do it. I, I just have no desire to do it. It's like the French horn. It just I, I don't feel like playing it. And uh, well, there you go. Knock yourself out. An F or a G above double C. Easy as can be articulating on an F above double C. And all those rips that you had that I did, again, they're a little clumsy, but in all those Strauss concerti and the operas and everything that's named to a G above double C, G above high C, nobody's doing that, guys. Nobody is doing that. And this, like the 1SS and the 1SB, is going to revolutionized horn play. It may take a while, and unfortunately, Jerry doesn't have an actual horn player <laughs> that has a YouTube channel that they could, um, you know, uh, do it for. Um, 
But, guys, you can't beat it. For ease of playing, for tone, power, range, and endurance, you can't beat it. Now, it's done. Jerry has revolutionized the brass world. And I'm not going to... <laughs> As I said on the other, if you don't believe me now, I, what can I do? Okay? So anyway, that's that. And I hope it answers your questions. Thing of beauty, a thing of genius, and um, we'll be back to Trumpet on Monday. So if there's any more comments and uh, criticisms or emails, let me know down or email me, and I'll try to answer as soon as I can. Okay, guys, have a great day. I love you all. Eat your fruits and vegetables. Drink your fruits and vegetables and the juice. You can't beat the juice. And uh, turn back the hands of time with your aging and live your life with true power.